horror movies, mutilation, decapitation, torture. Does that sound entertaining? More blood than a blood bag. Have we got your attention? Hello, everyone. Today, I want to talk about the Cecil Hotel in downtown LA. Um, I'm going to go over a very brief history where it was opened in 1924 and it was supposed to be a grand ritzy hotel and it was at first. Uh, it opened, it flourished through the 40s as a destination hotspot for, uh, you know, traveling people and because it was in downtown LA, a lot of famous people stayed there. It was just a great place to vacation. Um, it flourished through the 40s, and then the Depression hit, and it started falling on hard times, and less desirable people, less desirable people started staying there. And if you know anything about this hotel, then you know that it has a very violent and disturbing past associated with it, starting pretty much right away, all the way up until 2015. It, the deaths that occur at this hotel span from 1927 to 2015. Um, not every year, but damn near. It's pretty crazy. So let's get into it. I'm just going to read a little bit about the murders. And again, it, they started in the 20s. So in the 20s, there wasn't worldwide news. There wasn't uh, social media, obviously, the internet, anything like that. So these deaths weren't wildly publicized. You saw them in the newspaper and that was it. So there's not a lot of history on a lot of these things. There's not a lot to read about about these things. but. Let's jump into it anyways, and I'll pick and choose some of these that I'll talk a little bit more in depth about. Here we go. Uh, January 1927, Percy Cook. Uh, this guy was apparently trying to work it out with his wife. Couldn't do it. He So his marriage failed, and he just felt like giving up, so he shot himself in the head. So... Cecil Hotel's first suicide. Congratulations, there were many more to come. In 1931, uh, W.K. Norton uh, committed suicide by ingesting poison pills. Now, I don't know what type of poison pills they were, but back then I think you could get cyanide pills, so that's probably it. In 1932, a young man named Benjamin shot himself in the head. Uh, in 1934, Sergeant Lewis Borden uh, slit his own throat. That's some hardcore shit. Anyways, 1937, a lady named Grace fell from the building. Now, you're going to see this as a trend. A lot of people fell from the building. If they didn't leave a suicide note and there was no physical fight to get them out of the window, and there was no physical fight to get them out of the window, then they fell from the window. So a lot of these people probably jumped or were pushed out of the window. And again, there was no definitive way of saying whether they jumped or were pushed. So they just say fell. Okay. So on to 1938, Erwin Neblet, uh, ingested poison again, not really sure. He was a na naval officer, uh, that ingested poison for whatever reason. And you know, they didn't specify what type of poison he ingested through my research, uh, which is shoddy at best. So let's move along. 1940, Dorothy Seeger uh, ingested poison. That must have been a popular way to go back then. I didn't, I would have never, I would have never thought of that. Uh, now we're going to take a pause in 1944 to discuss this. There was a girl staying there named Dorothy Jean Perso. Uh, she was 19 years old. She was there with her boyfriend. And apparently, the story that is told is she didn't know she was pregnant. Um, one thing to know about the hotel before we get too far into the story is it had shared bathrooms. Uh, 
each floor had its own bathroom and you know no hotel rooms had their own bathroom so to not disturb her boyfriend that she was with when she went into labor she went into the bathroom and gave birth to this baby and from what she said uh which i don't buy for a fucking second um she said that the baby was dead she had given birth to a stillborn so instead of calling the police calling the hospital calling her fucking boyfriend down the hall um she tossed the baby out the window um it doesn't say what floor she was on but i'm betting it wasn't the first uh she was charged for murder but she was acquitted by uh, reason of insanity. I don't buy into any of that shit. Um, put a bullet in the back of her head. Uh, that's terrible. Fuck her. And she's a piece of shit. Um, but anyways, let's move on. Um, 1947, Robert Smith fell from the building. Again, this is something that happened often. You will see this, uh, being a theme I'm guessing they're all suicides. Uh, jumping from buildings is pretty popular, especially back then, as a uh, way of, you know, dying, uh, committing suicide. So, 1954, uh, Helen Gurney fell from the building. Um, at this point, you should probably put locks on the goddamn windows and lock all your roof accesses so that this shit doesn't keep happening. That's three people that have fallen from the building. How many more times does it need to happen uh, for them to lock up the damn windows? Well, we're going to find out, actually. 1962, Julian Francis Moore fell from the building. 1962, literally later that year. Now, this fall from the building <laughs> is a little strange. Uh... Just the series of events that had to have happened for this to take place. Pauline Oden was a 27-year-old woman staying at the hotel. She had a fight with her husband. She said, fuck this, I'm out. She jumped from her ninth story window of the hotel room. Again, still no locks installed. This time, she didn't fall directly to her death, but fell on George Gianni, a 65-year-old man that just was walking by and a bitch fell on him. Um, that's the shittiest. Only do you kill yourself, you kill somebody else in the process. It, that is the shittiest way to go. You're just having a stroll in downtown LA and a woman falls on you and kills you. Dude, what? All right, moving on. So this lady, uh, she had the nickname of Pigeon Goldie. I'll call her Goldie because I'm not going to bother with her whole name. Um, in 1964, she was a longtime resident of the hotel. She was very well liked by all the people at the hotel. They gave her the name Pigeon Goldie because she would go down to... Uh, the park and feed all the pigeons and she was just a friendly person um, anyways hotel services found her in her hotel room dead she had been beaten and raped and stabbed uh, and her room was ransacked now there was a guy named Jacques Erlinger he caught the charge because he was found in that same park where she used to feed pigeons covered in blood, wandering around. They charged him with the murder, but eventually he got off. Uh, he was acquitted of the murder charges. He got to go free. And the mystery s still remains of who actually killed this lady if it was not him. So moving on. 1975, Allison Lowell. She fell from the building. We're right back to it. People just keep falling out of this building. Does the place have windows? Like, what the hell? Um, and then in, so from 75 to 92, it was pretty quiet at this hotel. But in 92, there was, this person has no name. They never identified this person, but an African-American man in his 20s to 30s fell from the building. Again, what? So with that being said, let's take a break because there's two more deaths attributed to this building. Let's circle back to the 80s. In the 80s, a serial killer stayed there. 
Can you guess which one? Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was a uh, guest at this hotel. He basically lived at this hotel and did a lot of his killing while living in this hotel. Um, at this time, again, it was the hotel had been on its decline. Uh, Skid Row uh, had gotten its name because of all the vagrants, the drugs, the violence, and downtown was just becoming a bad place to be. Um, so it makes sense that he would have, you know, migrated over there. Uh, and people say that he was doing his killings while living in the hotel because he was seen throwing his clothes away outside the hotel and then walking through the lobby in his underwear or less, um, covered in blood. I just thought it was interesting that not only does this have this hotel have such a horrible history, Richard Ramirez was a tenant at this place. Um, he is the more famous serial killer, but there was another serial killer that stayed there. Now, the other serial killer was Australian and he idolized Richard Ramirez. So that's more than likely why he went here. Um, he was arrested in the 70s. His name was Jack Unterweger or something. I don't know. Uh, he had been charged for murder in Australia and he went to prison from 1974 to 1990. They let him out and he proceeded to kill in Germany, Czechoslovakia, and then come to the United States, staying at the Cecil Hotel, doing more killing. Um, they eventually caught him in 1994 and he hung himself in prison. Um, but apparently he was quite the poet. He, he was great with, uh, writing. I don't know. You can look more into him. Apparently he's pretty popular. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any interest in reading his writings. I didn't bother reading any for this video. So if you're curious, go check it out. Um, all right, so those are the serial killers in this hotel. That brings us to 2013, one of the last two uh, deaths of this hotel. This one is more publicly known because social media, the internet, and everything like that. Uh, Eliza Lamb. She was a Canadian student here on vacation. She was staying at the Cecil Hotel. Uh, she went missing, and after about three weeks, the cops got involved, uh, you know, they couldn't find her. At the end of those three weeks of her being missing, people started complaining, guests at the hotel started complaining about the water, the smell, the discoloration, and the taste of the water. Uh, they were saying that it was absolutely disgusting. I don't think I need to tell you where she was found, but I will. She was found naked and decomposing in the hotel's water supply. Uh, now, as to how she got there remains a mystery. Um, a lot of people said that she was off her meds and she was bipolar, so she got in there, got stuck, couldn't find her way out, and inevitably drowned. Some people say that she was on acid and found her way in there, couldn't get out, drowned. Some people say, based on a video that is still uh, easily found on the internet, um, there's video footage of her in the hotel. She's on the elevator. She pushes all the buttons on the elevator. She leans out of the elevator, looks around, leans back in the elevator, steps out of the elevator, almost as if she's stepping away from somebody, and then <clears throat> starts motioning with her hands, doing uh, some weird things like this, kind of like, you know, whatever. And uh, that's the last she was ever seen. So some people say that it looked like she was interacting with somebody and whoever that other person is, is the person that killed her and put her in there. We don't know. It's still a mystery. And then the last death at the Cecil Hotel. An unnamed 28-year-old man was found outside the Cecil Hotel. Uh, in 2015, it was suspected that he jumped from his window, but the coroner never gave a reason for his death publicly. So we don't know who he was or how he died in reality. Uh, but he probably fell from the building because why not? Um, 
And if they hadn't put locks on the windows by 2015, then fuck, dude, really? Anyways, so that's the horrible history of the Cecil Hotel. The current news on the Cecil Hotel is uh, they shut it down in 2017 to start renovating it and making it uh, golden again. They were going to restore it and turn it into a beautiful hotel in hopes of bringing some revenue and classing up downtown LA. Uh, that's not my words. That's just the research that I've done. I don't know anything about downtown LA from what I've heard. It's not great, but whatever. Um, but due to COVID, uh, all the renovations have stopped. And even though they could technically get back to work on it, Nobody seems to have shown back up for work. That's the state of it. It's uh, it's still up in the air as to the future of the Cecil Hotel. The next time you're watching that American Horror Story hotel season, uh, yeah, that season is loosely based on the Cecil Hotel. So that will bring a new perspective to, the, uh, to that season. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And, and if you did subscribe, check back because I'm going to be doing these, uh, videos, weird places, hauntings, cryptoids, murders, uh, just an array of things that interest me. Um, so check back in and, uh, see what's next.